Now that we've got details about what Fantasy Grounds is out of the way, we can start getting into the tutorial side of things. And you'll see on my screen that I actually have two versions of Fantasy Grounds running. The one on the right is the current version of Fantasy Grounds, the one that SmiteWorks is still supporting and releasing. Um, and it, but it is called the classic version. And the reason it has been called the classic version is that there is work underway to replace it. And we'll get into that in a second. But the interface on the right, you can see it's quite tight. It's, it, it's got a good graphical interface to it, but it just seems to be a little bit more like a, you get the feel of a web uh, browser kind of uh, look to it in, in, in movement. So clicking on these links here, You'll see when I move the, the mouse over these, the, they change the, the, the cursor to an actual hand. Um, you click on that and it opens up either a browser or uh, a local PDF one, uh, that got installed when you installed the, the application. However, the one on the left is the next generation of Fantasy Grounds. It is being called the Unity version of Fantasy Grounds. And the reason it is being called the Unity version of Fantasy Grounds is because SmiteWorks replaced the underlying graphical and, and rendering engine with the Unity game engine. And this was to address some technical issues that were common requests, but the, the they just couldn't deal with those particular issues under the existing version of Fantasy Grounds. And as you can see, there's quite a difference between the two of them. The interface on the left is fairly large. It looks crisp, clean, whereas the interface on the right uh, looks a bit dated, but still functional. It still does look good, don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, it's one that is starting to get old, is a good way to look at it. Um, so with that in mind, I will start to cover the differences, um, uh, that are, uh, that you can see on both of these particular versions of Fantasy Grounds. So on the right, you see a load and a create campaign specifically, uh, right here. Um, that has been merged into the host campaign. Uh, so if you click inside of host campaign, you will see uh, the ability to either create a new campaign or load an existing campaign. Um, the join game has now been moved up and is now called join campaign. And it kind of makes sense to have these two next to each other because that's probably what you're going to do most of the time. Um, Manage characters doesn't exist anymore. Um, and as of this moment, I still haven't found where that functionality is. It might be within the, the fully open version of Fantasy Grounds, um, but I'm not entirely certain yet as I still haven't uh, found that, but it is no longer on this particular part of the screen. And as you can see here, the update and settings buttons have been stacked on top of each other. And outside of the coloring of the buttons, everything else remains the same for those two. This middle section here, where you've got the getting started, uh, getting content, and getting help sections, have been reworked. Um, it's it's now clear as to to what each uh, button is going to do and it's easier to click on. You don't have to worry about panicking over trying to get the right button here um, as well as the, the release notes. But the one thing you don't see here anymore is the announcements and I'm not entirely certain why that is. Up in the uh, upper right here you'll see that we have the version information uh, is still there. You'll see that I've got a, a different version there. Um, and this icon here actually opens up a Windows Explorer screen to your current data set folder for Fantasy Grounds, um, whereas that has been moved to the upper left in the new version of Fantasy Grounds. This, by the way, is a, I think, a debugging console. Based on what I can see, some debugging log information goes in, into this particular screen. A lot easier to copy and paste it. I'm not sure if that's going to stay around for release or not, but um, it's been useful for the, the beta testing that we've been doing thus far. Um, finally, the Options that you see here, sometimes they bury themselves in this location, especially when you're running Fantasy Grounds full screen. Whereas if you uh, run Fantasy Grounds full screen on the new edition, this sticks around. So the actual Windows border sticks around. And I will do that just to give you an idea. So as you can see here, the buttons have moved into this particular section uh, of the screen. And the border specific to Fantasy Grounds is now, or to Windows rather, is now gone. And clicking that just restores the window, whereas with this particular one, the whole border sticks around, with the, or the rather the upper menu uh, sticks around, but the border on the sides does go away. Um, so as you can see, there's now a, a slight change in the behavior of, of, of that particular window. And finally, the last comment that I will make is that over here underneath this black box um, is the username. 
that is associated with your account. And uh, the account is something that we're going to get to here in a moment. In order to use Fantasy Grounds, you actually have to sign up on the Fantasy Grounds uh, website with an account, both a username and a password. The reason for that is that all uh, checks that are made to, to look for patches, for, for updates, new uh, DLC that you've purchased, anything along those lines, always checks the Fantasy Grounds um, website for that particular information. That is done under the settings window here, but... If you'll notice on the old version of Fantasy Grounds, that username doesn't exist anywhere. You can't see it. It's literally new to this particular version of Fantasy Grounds. Um, I will not show you the settings window just yet. I've got to do some preparation in order to, to do that because within that screen is going to be the license key information um, and your credentials that you use to authenticate to the Fantasy Grounds server. I will add to this before I get into the settings options um, that as a demo user, I do believe you can actually skip the credential sign in. Um, I think things are built into uh, Fantasy Grounds to allow the updates to still take place. Um, but as I've never actually used the demo version past my initial, um, this is what it looks like test and this is how you use it test, um, I never really focused on whether that was actually the case or not. Um, and, and I, by that time I would already made the decision I was going to buy Fantasy Grounds, so I'd already created an account. Um, in addition to that, I don't know if the lack of a requirement to sign on for the demo user is going to stick around for the Unity version. I don't know if Smiteworks has made that change, so it may be a requirement going forward. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you do want to give the demo version a try. I really don't think they'll do that. Um, Smiteworks doesn't seem like that would be something that they would do, uh, but it might be uh, something that they do make a change because of how things have changed here. I will point out that if you try to get to the uh, Fantasy Grounds settings page, um, I just click the Fantasy Grounds but, uh, settings button there, and you happen to have another Fantasy Grounds session running, regardless of whether it's the Unity or the Classic version, you will get this particular screen. And I'm, I'm bringing this up now because it's not uncommon for a DM to run both their DM session and a, uh, a connected player session so that they can see what players see. Um, and uh, if they f have to go through an update process for some reason, they might unintentionally forget to close that other window or one of the other windows. So they will get this error. So if you do see this error, it just means that Fantasy Grounds is still running somewhere on the same machine that you are currently trying to do the update on. When you click on the Setup button, um, you'll get a screen that looks like this. Although I've already gone through the process of authenticating um, so that uh, nobody could really uh, see, any, see what my credentials are or anything like that. Um, this is a one-time hit. So when you've created your Fantasy Grounds account, you then have to go into your settings screen, add in your username and your password, and once you've done that, you can update your license key um, to the one that uh, Smiteworks has sent you. And it may automatically populate depending on um, depending on whether you uh, just have the one key. If you have multiple keys, you might have to go through and enter the newest one manually. Uh, for example, I went through a standard to an ultimate upgrade. Um, so when I did that, I had to make sure that the ultimate license key was added to my classic version of Fantasy Grounds rather than the standard key. And that, once I had done that, it had gone through the process of updating everything associated with the, the ultimate edition. In this case, because I'm a beta user for um, the, the Unity engine, I only have the one key. And I don't know if that will change going forward, um, whether they're going to maintain the same licensing requirement going forward when they go public or not. That hasn't been discussed um, in relation to whether they're going to change that. Regardless of that, when you've authenticated and when you've logged in, you'll get a, an update on that screen. Log in successful, your purchases will be synced on the next update. What that means is, is that you will now have to run the update Fantasy Grounds um, button uh, that is on the main login screen. And when you do that, it will start to pull down any updates for the Fantasy Grounds updater, updates for Fantasy Grounds itself, and all of the DLC and uh, modules that you have purchased through either Steam or, or the Smiteworks' own Fantasy Grounds website. There is something I will point out about uh, your Steam DLC purchases or your Steam purchases. You need to link your Steam account 
to your Fantasy Grounds account in order for the uh, application to properly pick up any new DLC or if you've purchased Fantasy Grounds, what edition you've purchased. Um, the reason for that is the Fantasy Grounds updater and the Fantasy Grounds software does not check Steam. It checks the Fantasy Grounds servers. It does not go anywhere near Steam. So the Fantasy Grounds servers create the link between um, your Steam account and your Fantasy Grounds account. And it takes approximately two to five minutes, I've detect I've noticed, uh, for it to pick up any new DLC that you have purchased. So it's not uncommon for me to go buy a DLC on Steam. And then uh, 10 minutes later, I'm loading up Fantasy Grounds, do the update, and it's already detected that that uh, the, the DLC I've just purchased is there and ready to go. So it starts to download it. Those are things that you will see um, as problematic going forward. So, for example, if you have an invalid license key, you'll get an error in the upper level or in the upper window there. Um, so if you're trying to use, for example, the classic edition key on the Unity edition, you're going to receive an error. Um, you will find your Unity edition in your uh, Fantasy Grounds account. Um, the license key will be there. In addition, if you get the wrong username and password and you fail to log in, it will no longer update Fantasy Grounds anytime you try to run it. You will no longer see that there is an update available. I don't know if you noticed, but on the, the main login screens, the, the, the update button was um, highlighted in, in both the classic version and uh, the Unity version. Logging in is a one-time thing. So when I click this save option, um, it will save those credentials until you log in again. So you don't have to hit the settings button every single time you start up Fantasy Grounds thinking that you have to log in to get the new updates, things like that. No, it doesn't work that way. You literally you log in once, once, you're vet, once you've got a valid um, authentication done, you link your key into it, and then after that you're good to go. And you just click save and it saves all of that locally. Um, hopefully it's encrypted. I honestly don't know if uh, Smiteworks does that. I'm going to have to go look now. Um, in any effect, er, yeah, in any event, um, once you've done this, you can now go through the process of updating Fantasy Grounds to be able to pull down the any updates associated with Fantasy Grounds itself, DLCs, or the updater itself. And uh, if you happen to be a Kickstarter member, you will also, this is when all of your entitlements will, will be pulled down as well. Before completely leaving the settings uh, section, um, I'd just like to point out the other, uh, the functionality of the other two tabs here. The uh, first one, I don't know why it's called Steam Users, um, but this allows you to link your uh, Steam and Peso accounts into your Fantasy Grounds account. Um, in the case of Steam, uh, this allows Fantasy Grounds to pick up any DLC that you purchase through the Steam Market. Um, and there's literally thousands of uh, Fantasy Grounds modules available on the Steam Market for... Uh, uh, for sale. Um, and the Pezo account, I do believe this doesn't give you a Fantasy Grounds module for free or link your Fantasy Grounds DLC for free what it, or in, into uh, Fantasy Grounds, sorry. Um, I believe what this actually does is show uh, if you have a module on your Pezo account, you can purchase it at a reduced cost on the Fantasy Grounds servers. Um, but I haven't been able to find too much more in the way of information on that. I believe this is literally new to Fantasy Grounds Unity. Um, so I think that might be uh, still pending documentation. Um, beyond that, uh, there is the Advanced tab. And as you can see here, um, what this does is it allows you to change the locations of the app and the data directories. I've kind of got the starting elements here uh, blanked out. Um, and enable advanced uh, logging as well, although generally you probably wouldn't need that unless you're trying to work out a particular issue. Um, it's typically a good idea in relation to uh, your data directory to have it separate from your app directory. Um, it hasn't been an issue since I've been using the game, um, but I have seen references to the past that sometimes the app directory gets updated a little bit too aggressively and campaigns go poof, but I have not seen that since I've started using the uh, software in, in 2017. Um, so I don't know if that's ever going to ho hopefully crop up again. Uh, although Unity is a new beta version, so maybe there are some issues might re-crop up in, in respect to that. Uh, now, the live channel is the release channel. There is another uh, channel here, uh, several actually. Um, in most cases, in fact, 
in all cases, if you're actually running a game that you would consider quote unquote production, you would use the live channel. You would not go into the, the test or dev or anything like that. If, however, you are uh, um, running into a particular issue, then maybe there's already a patch in place under test and dev uh, that resolves that problem for you. Um, but generally, you do not leave the live uh, live release unless uh, you're, you're running into issues or trying to debug a particular problem. Um, beyond that, that's the settings tab. And we can then move into actually starting to create campaigns and whatnot. Before I continue, I just want to apologize for the blank notepad screen on the, uh, the back there. Um, I'm not entirely certain whether the background I have on the system is properly licensed, so I didn't want to run the risk of putting it out there and then getting a DMC takedown or something to that effect. I know that those things can be rather painful based on YouTubers that I've, I've watched and have run into them. Um, anyway, uh, back on topic. When you finish uh, adding in your credentials, you get your license key in place. The next screen that you will be brought to is this screen here, and this is the Fantasy Grounds Updater. And when you run this, it will start to go through the process of pulling down Fantasy Grounds changes, Fantasy Grounds updates. Um, so just one second here. I believe this might trigger a... Yep, it did. So let me pause, and then I'll be right back. All right, so... It, it did kick off another screen, but it doesn't bring it back to where it was, so I had to make sure that it was back in place, and obviously I don't want my username exposed, so I just had to make sure that everything was situated right, so I apologize if there's a slight adjustment where the window is. But as you can see, it's going through the process of downloading um, all of the updates associated with Fantasy Grounds. You'll see things like Core RPG, 3.5 edition, 4th edition, 5th edition, stuff like that. It's literally going to go through and pull down the application, any updates for the updater itself, which is what you saw initially. Um, all of the SRD rule sets will be updated, and then it will go through the process of pulling down any of your DLCs. So all of these uh, WOTC packages that you see here are 5th edition modules that I've purchased. So the PHP Deluxe is the Player's Handbook. Uh, MM Deluxe is the Monster's Manual. Um, Lost Minds of Fendelver are the LMLP, which is the the campaign I'm going to use for this particular tutorial slash demo and the DMG is the dungeon master guys so on and so forth so I'm going to let this run and then once it is nearing completion I will go ahead and bring back uh, the recording and see what show you what it looks like when it finishes okay uh, while this is downloading actually I will point out one thing here you'll see up here that there is a log button and if you run into a situation where, for some reason, the update um, hangs, stalls, airs out, whatever, you're probably going to be asked to try to grab that log file. That log file is going to be in the Fantasy Grounds uh, folder uh, that you can get to from um, the, the, the main login screen there. So you will find that there. Um, in addition, when you click this button, it will kick up a notepad, and you can just copy and paste the, the contents there. Actually... During that process, it looks like this finished. So this is what it looks like when it finishes. And now that this is done, um, everything else is uh, ready to go. Fantasy Grounds is ready to go. It's pulled down all of your entitlements, all of your DLCs, modules, things like that, um, that are coming directly from the Fantasy Grounds website or servers. And you can just click the launch Fantasy Grounds at this point. So when I've got Fantasy Grounds back up and running, I will do that, and we will move on to the next section.